Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to talk about aluminum. The Battleship New Jersey film crew was invited to the press pool for the commissioning of LCS-28 USS Savannah, which is an independence-class littoral combat ship made entirely out of aluminum. The other class of littoral combat ship, the Freedoms, have a steel hull and an aluminum superstructure. The Navy previously attempted this and then went back to all steel construction. So why are littoral combat ships being built out of aluminum? Why is this a concept that the Navy goes back to and then moves away from and goes back to? We are in the officer's galley on Battleship New Jersey on second deck. And this is one of the spaces that is in the process of being restored. Um, and you can see that a large part of this process is chipping and painting. Before we chip paint, we have to test to make sure it's not lead paint. It becomes a whole to do if it is lead paint. Definitely on this ship, since they continued to use her into the 80s, uh, most of the lead paint was remediated and the new stuff that they were putting down was not hazardous. During World War II, Ships like New Jersey are built entirely out of steel. Uh, steel is easier to join together, either by uh, riveting, if you're driving a red hot rivet through, or by welding. However, steel is significantly heavier and denser. It's about three times denser than aluminum. Um, this makes it better as far as armor, but it makes your vessels heavier. Um, now, nowadays, Welding has become way more common, and welding aluminum is not an issue. But during World War II, when welding was a brand new thing and steel was the tradition, you built battleships like New Jersey out of steel. It's tough. However, uh, World War II saw the proliferation of electronics antennas, all sorts of radios and radars and other things uh, that have to be mounted in the superstructure and they have to be a certain distance away from each other when they're transmitting and receiving, and steel gets in the way of that. And so you see these ships post-war built with these absolutely massive superstructures, which make them ridiculously top-heavy. Uh, even Battleship New Jersey, with all of her reserve of buoyancy and size, ran out of space for stuff in the superstructure. And so you see things like the discone cage antenna all the way at the bow of the ship, which is a weird place for a radio antenna, uh, because there's no room in the superstructure. And you see on the uh, tripod mast that was added in the 80s, there are these uh, four dipoles on the corners that stick up that are supposed to absorb some of the uh, electromagnetic frequencies being put out by these so that different antennas aren't interfering with each other. Uh, and so it gets super complex and all this top weight is causing issues. And so relatively small warships like frigates and destroyers have to balloon in size to have a modern electronic suite, which increases their cost, which means you can't have enough of them, which is a problem because the Soviet Union is building all these submarines. So what is a Navy to do? The solution was to build a warship with a steel hull and an aluminum superstructure. The aluminum again, is about half as light as steel. And so you can um, build a larger structure without adding nearly as much top weight. The aluminum is significantly more corrosion resistant and it interferes with electronics a lot less. Now this was all well and good. However, the Navy found massive cracking issues on every single ship built uh, that was bimetallic, where the aluminum is welded to the steel uh, would crack as the ship flexed. And, and this was a significant issue that uh, continued throughout many of these uh, ships' careers. And then, of course, the biggest issue is aluminum burns at a much lower temperature than steel. Uh, if a steel ship has the steel catching on fire, the, the ship has already lost. That, that fire is at a point that there's a problem. But at least 200 degrees less than that, Aluminum will catch on fire, and so a ship that would otherwise survive uh, could be completely destroyed. Uh, the Navy relearned this lesson when the uh, cruiser Belknap 
was rammed by the John F. Kennedy, or vice versa. I can't remember who rammed who. But check out this picture of Belknap after the fire. You can really tell what the steel hull is versus what the aluminum superstructure is. Compare that to the ship prior to the ramming, and you can see what she's supposed to look like. So the entire structure burns to the main deck. Um, the, these fire issues continue in the only basically modern naval war that's been fought, the Falklands conflict, where Great Britain has some frigates that uh, get hit, that burn pretty badly. Uh, and pretty much even though 60s to the 80s, it, it's common to see aluminum superstructures on steel hulls, that goes away. Well, the, the inherent problems do not go away. So you see ships like the Ticonderoga class cruisers, the Arleigh Burke class destroyers have these really big superstructures because now in addition to all their antennas, they've got these uh, phased array uh, Aegis systems that have to be mounted inside the superstructure. And so they're these big blocky things with tall masts and all these antennas. So the Navy in the 2000s again has to look at how to flighten their ships. Another issue is steel reflex radar waves back. So ships with steel superstructures show up as bigger radar returns and are less stealthy. So as part of the development process for the Zumwalt class destroyers, the Navy looks into alternatives. Uh, so they look at making a ship with uh, some sort of composite resin, carbon fiber, just throwing out material buzzwords now. Uh, it, it's still largely classified, but, but some sort of uh, poured resin type a compound superstructure, which is going to be better at absorbing and deflecting radar waves and um, is going to be lighter and allegedly even stronger than steel. But it's a huge expense to make these epoxy or resin uh, structures and it works completely differently than steel. And uh, if there is a fire near it and it burns, it's going to release some, some really hazardous fumes and who knows what other repercussions there are we're, we're still decades away from knowing the full repercussions of the things we do nowadays so only the three zumwalts were built and that technology has not been used on any other class of ships that i'm aware of but around the same time the navy develops the littoral combat ship which is supposed to be partially or entirely built out of aluminum um, so why does the Navy go back to this? What are the benefits of aluminum? The most readily noticeable benefit is that the uh, aluminum being more corrosion resistant does not need to be painted at all. Uh, the, the weirdest thing for us when we went and took a tour of Savannah is that uh, she is unpainted. The inside, the outside, the, the, the ship has no paint. Even things like our bullseyes, which are taped over in here, but uh, even things like the bullseyes, which on this ship are painted and stenciled on, are adhesive stickers that are uh, put on the ship. So th there is very little uh, painting work that needs to be done. Quite simply, it's a bosun mate's dream. Not only have you cut down on maintenance and corrosion issues there, you've also uh, reduced weight, the paint, believe it or not, adds a ton of weight to ships, which is tens of tons in a vessel the size of Savannah. You're also uh, removing something that is flammable. The paint burns at even a lower temperature than the aluminum. So you're removing another flammable aspect um, and all the other things we've talked about, top weight issues and not interfering with antennas and whatnot. So th there's lots of benefits to aluminum. The only major downsides are that it burns and that it's less dense than steel. But if you make an armored belt twice as thick out of aluminum than you were going to make out of steel, it is now as effective and still lighter. Not that we put armored belts on ships anymore, uh, with the possible exception of the nuclear carriers. Uh, so that's not really an issue. The, you're still saving weight with a... Uh, uh, thicker aluminum than steel and the burning at the end of the day isn't really an issue because if a modern ship takes a hit it's done anyway so modern ships 
can take a hit and survive. We see this with ships like uh, Stark, Samuel B. Roberts, and Cole. But in each instance, a single hit knocks those ships out of combat entirely uh, for basically the duration of time it takes to build a whole new ship. Uh, so you have mission killed that vessel until it gets put on a heavy lift ship, taken back to uh, a friendly port, and receives major repair works. These ships are not designed like battleships to take multiple hits and be able to continue a campaign or be repaired at a floating dry dock in a jungle island near the enemy coast and continue in combat. Yeah, or World War II aircraft carriers like Yorktown and Intrepid that take hits to the flight decks and you just lay new wood down and keep operating throughout an engagement. Uh, that's not how ships work, and that's okay because that's not how battles work anymore. The mission of the Luxoro combat ships is not to fight knockdown, drag out naval battles like we see in the uh, actions around Lake Hay Gulf. They are littoral. They're designed to interdict enemy shipping in coastal regions, hunt submarines, do mine sweeping. Uh, they're, they're not designed to go toe to toe with an enemy frigate. And, of course, the Navy knows that flammability is an issue. So these ships have a special type of insulation uh, that one of their chief petty officers referred to as super wool. And this is some sort of carbon fiber composite uh, material that acts like insulation, but is also super fire resistant. Uh, and then just like a battleship, there are repair lockers with firefighting equipment all over the vessel. And we didn't go into a space that we didn't see damage control equipment. So what are your thoughts on aluminum hauled vessels? Do you think the Navy is crazy for going back to this idea? Or do you think it's an idea which time has finally come? I really like not having to paint. That is uh, a great benefit there for me. But if you'd like to help me out painting the ship, there's a link in the description below uh, to join our volunteer program. I could use all the help I can get maintaining this ship. We are not made out of aluminum. We have a tremendous amount of paint. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the ship. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so that more people find out about our museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.